bruit ok ok good evening and welcome to the conversation tonight between myself and Ernesto Neto. I'm not going to do an introduction to Ernesto because that's what our conversation will be about. Okay. Who he is and what he does. Just to say that he lives and works in Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. And we're going to be talking about many different things. Some about the studio, but a lot of things that aren't about the studio. So welcome. Welcome Thank to you. Johannesburg. Uh, welcome to the Center for the Less Good Idea. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here good. at the Center of the Less Good Idea. The Center of the Less Good Idea. <laughs> so when we were talking this afternoon, we started, we discovered that we had a common interest in the artist Alexander Calder. And maybe that's a good, as good a place to any, because it's a story both of origins and of what are the things that one has seen in one's early years as an artist that push one towards this activity. And what we have on the screen behind us is one of Ernesto's works, but we can maybe just look at a couple of the calders to familiarize ourselves with what we're talking about, thanks. So we've got some different things in the computer and Himali upstairs is going to find them either on the web or on the computer as we need them. So let's put up one of the calders and talk about Alexander Calder. By, by way of introduction with Calder, the American artist famous for making mobiles and stabiles and having a new thought of uh, the, the malleability of sculpture rather than its fixed form. For me it's interested, interesting at the moment I'm working on a project that is a response to a performance piece that Calder uh, uh, made in the 1960s. Um, and so in describing this to Ernesto, I discovered that he too had an interest in Calder. So let's start there. Calder, Alexander Calder. He, he was a big bear uh, for me, a, a lion too. He had a circus that he made a lot of uh, figures of the circus. The guy getting the sword, uh, the guy with the lion. And this was beautiful. But Calder, when I begin to make sculptures, uh, like a year after, I didn't have a very formal study like a university. There was two schools in Rio de Janeiro, the School of Visual Arts at Parque Lage, besides the university, and the School of Museum Modern Art. And I began in the Parque Lage, then I began to have class in the, at the Museum Modern Art. And one of the teachers was giving a class like researching Calder. And so we begin to do some sculptures with a wire. He likes to work with a wire, which in a way, you make a lot of things of a wire that a son yeah. had to make these figures, no? And... There's some, I mean, those kind yeah, of... Yeah, these figures. And... And these sculptures, this, uh, this one, these mobiles, these sculptures, they are very related to balance, mm -hmm. you know, because they are all in balance, uh, measuring the weight from one side to the other side. And they dance, and they dance with the wind. And this is, is it's amazing because uh, the wind is everywhere now. And the first feeling that I had when I arrived here, like three days ago or four days ago on Friday, I get out of the, the, uh, the airport, and then I, I feel the air, you know, and the air come to me and it give me a, a sensation of uh, being here, breathing the air, and I felt this air coming all the way to Brazil, to here, and because the air here is all the same air, now it goes from here to there, it, it, it travels a lot, the air, now it goes, <laughs> and get inside on, on us, get out, sometimes the air is inside of me, then it's inside of you, and you, now, you, you're exchanging air between each other, and it gets inside of us, and get inside to you, that is the air that was there, here, and make some message come from you to me on the air. And Calder has, and I was telling um, William today when we, we found out our, this, our common interest, that there is a picture of him that he has this head like a bear, like a, I don't know, and he is like that. So he's this big man, he has these gigantic studios full of wires and pieces of metal cutted. 
And suddenly there is this picture of such a little sculpture. Uh, it's a um, stable mobile, this one that you have a, a base, but it moves. And it just blowing it. I, feel, I felt it was good. So I think one of the things we're going to keep coming back to is the body. Here you're talking about the lungs and the yeah. breath. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, both, both about how it connects to the world, as you say, the air from all over coming in and going out, but also as a bodily activity. And I'm always interested in the, the materials that one thinks in as an artist. And movement is one that seems both that called us interested in and uh, movement in the body. Um, so here we're quite static uh, sitting like this. But Maybe if we were to we stand can. up, we can slowly gather the energy to be upright and feel a different kind of movement. So we'll get there, even if at the moment we still sit. Yeah, this is amazing because you have this dance now. These figures who dance and these shadows. And you know, when we, because today we met each other in his home studio, and, and he began to write down on that uh, notebook. Now, because we begin to, to think, to, you know, to uh, just share now, because we're going to be here. And then he picked up maybe this pen, I believe, and he began to write, you know. And <laughs> <laughs> when he began to write, I, I, he was writing things, but I was not really, but we were talking about these things, but I was really looking to how he was writing, you know, because if I was writing, it would be different. If any one of you would be different. And I was seeing this writing, these lines getting out of his body, you know, as an extension of his bodies. And, and this was very interesting because these works that you saw, these big drops with the spices on it, it begins with some stockings, you know, women's stockings, that you Maybe cut, you put inside out, uh, make a knot, put some lead inside. And what I was doing in these moments of my life was picking up this little sculpture that is a seed of everything I have done. Uh, and I just let it fall down. And the way it fall down, it could fall like that, it could fall like this, more relaxed, more st stiff, you know, depending the way that you let it fall. And the feeling that I had was that the art, the spirit of the art, was coming through my body and getting out and falling down on the ground, make a continuity between ourselves and the ambience. So when you begin to draw today, and there was this black ink getting out and being in his studio, it's everything is kind of black and white, you know? And I feel all this like a snake, you know, getting out from your hand and, you know, expressing yourself uh, on, on the piece, on the page. On the page. On the page. And, and, you know, then there is this thing of idea now of what we think, uh, what's the concept of it. You can have many concepts, and concepts many times are, are quite similar, you know, but the expression of it, the expression is that, is that body that goes. <sighs> so it's an, it's an interesting thing, because the, one of the things I'm always interested in is, yes, you say the pen, you can watch the pen making its movement, and it leaves the, the line, the words, or the lines on the page. And I'm always interested in, you suck this line back into your pen. You run it backwards. And then all that ink is back in the pen. And all the potentiality is back in the pen. And there's another possibility that would come out. This obviously practically means filming and running films backwards. But it's a kind of saying a breathing and a respiration of a mark that can be put out and then can be sucked back in. But it, as you say, it has to do with the the movement of the arm. So that when you're drawing, just as, I mean, for me it's about, are you drawing a mark that is coming from your whole body, or just from your arm, or just from your elbow, or just from your wrist, or just from your knuckles? Uh-huh. And the sense of, I think even if it's from your knuckles, there's some sense it has to be sustained somewhere between your pelvis and your stomach. So I, 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 I say that see, when I left there, I, I, have, I was having this feeling. I will recall that is this, uh, also this staircase that you go there. I was feeling about your drawing and how your body express yourself in your body, how you have to be uh, drawing with the whole body. And when you talk now about the ink, 
you know? <laughs> yeah, when you see, uh, thought about the ink coming in back, I felt the ink going back to the recipient that has the ink. And the ink has this thing of liquid. Né? It's a liquid uh, thing that gets out. And all this work is about liquidness, because the relationship between the spices, in this case, and the, and the, and the textile, <laughs> is a relation of a liquid, like if it was a drop. And so the, all the process that I do on work is feeding, you know, as we put in water in a glass. So the glass of water always had been a, a kind of myth for me of uh, the situation that we are, of the content and the continent, and where we are, who, from where, and to where we go, what we put out, what we put in. So let's, that's one material is liquid water. And then the other one, which is maybe just because we see it so clearly in that image that's gone, but <coughs> yes, you saw it, were those different colors, which are both a sense of pigment, but what we don't see in the picture at all is also the smell. Yeah, the smell. Because these are spices, is that right? Yeah, spices, are... yeah. It's, it's curry. The name of this work is We Fish in the Time and is made with turmeric, clove, pepper, and, uh, and curry, you know. At this time, I asked a curry, this was in, in, in Liverpool, and because we are going to Liverpool, I asked a curry that's coming to, and, and they gave me a curry, but I didn't know that a curry is a mix of spices. Uh, I learned that when I went, you know where, okay. to, uh, to, to Sydney. Okay. And I met uh, Tony Bond, who was the curator of this Biennale, I believe. Yeah. And he was invited to exhibition to the piece that you saw there uh, some uh, weeks ago. And he lo loves to make curry. And he put all the spice, so I realized that the curry is the mix. So in the end of the day, what we do when we mix this spice on the space is a curry. Uh, and what I was telling uh, William today in the morning is that uh, the turmeric has a, a very bright color, a very yellow, orange, but the, the, the smell is very base, like bo. And, the, and the, the, the clove, which is the brown, is the opposite one. It's very amorphous color, but it's very thin, a very thin smell. And with this situation, we can balance the smell to be comfortable. Because when it comes to my life, kind of by chance, I went to a shop, an Arabian shop, and a friend uh, wanted to buy surf, something. I took her there. I had been in this shop many times. I have seen these colors and this smell, you know. But in this day, you know, some days we are different. Now, some days you go there and. I was there hypnotized by that, you know, like I was empty on myself, maybe. Then we get out, we walk two blocks, said, you know, let's go back there. And I bought some amount of it. I didn't know what to do, I just want to have it. And after a week in the studio with this turmeric one, with this dense smell, I began to feel uncomfortable. And what I did was to get, uh, I went there, I got the clove. And then it began to balance, and then I began to have pepper, cumin, that's, and it was good to stay in the studio every day there, no problem, <laughs> comfortableness, balance, again, balance, Calde. I mean, in anticipation, wanting to test this out, I've got some clothes. You do? Yes, in the, in the jar over there. Uh -huh. But I have to put your face right into it to smell, because it's not the volume of uh -huh. clothes that you have. And, and it's not grounded, no? No, no, it's not ground. That's also, yeah. also just whole clothes. This so is it mainly the... smells of the dentist, if you... Yeah, this is good to, to eat. Are you... you no, you no, that is, no, no, that is crazy. Mm, yeah. this, is, <laughs> this is makes you think that you're about to have... Uh, for, me, you see, for me, the, the smell is one thing, but then I also think of all the... For me, it is... Okay, what this is about, it's about sitting back in the dentist chair, yeah. smelling this, putting your mouth back, the needle coming towards <laughs> you, um, the smell of this, the sound of the dental drill, exactly. the smell of your tooth to make burning, a dry, huh? tooth <laughs> burning it dry? all of those other sets of associations that come from, at the end of it, also the smell of an apple pie with the <laughs> But it is. I mean, it's a, I think it is... I mean, in different ways, I think the sense of uh, 
thinking in material. So you're talking about breath coming in and out, but in the studio it has to end up, or it does, or in the exhibition it ends up as something that's there. In your case, the spices, the nylon, many different structures. Maybe we see some of the other structures of Ernesto's pieces. This is very much not with smell, but it's with... No, this is, you can go, walk inside. You take your shoes and you yeah. walk inside. There is, a, there is some organs inside that you can't see. This is another one that is a kind of a snake, a river, river snake. So that's a whole maze, that's a whole path that you would follow yeah. walking through there. So it's a mixture of an object that's made, but an invitation for an audience inside it. This you can dress. And also, it, there is the boy and there is the girl. So there is a hole that you can see there. That in the back, you see in the back there. So if you put your hand, you find out if it's a man or if it's a girl. And you come out with a different smell in your hand too. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about the possibility that we had been different. Not with arms, you know, a different... So the name is humanoids. Now, kind of... Uh, That's a uh, big uh, body, body, uh, body landscape because there is this continuity between our body and the landscape. For example, if you are an ant moving around the body of someone, maybe you don't know that it's a body. Maybe you know about, but because of the heat, you know, but you don't have this feeling. It's just a landscape. There's a lot of animals around inside of us now. I don't know if you know, brother, but we're made by... I don't know, uh, three trillions of cells with our DNA, mm -hmm. and much more, one quadrillion, something like that, with, with cells of foreigners, mostly bacteria, living together, everybody, dancing. <laughs> <laughs> dancing is very, very important in our body, you know, because uh, the, the cells, they communicate to each other, proteins and the cells, they communicate through dance. That's the, what these, uh, these scientists, they say that the best way to uh, uh, let us understand the communication is through dance, you know? One dance here, the other dance there, say, ah, okay, you can get in, or oh, no, no, you cannot get in. You know, basically like that, dormants, uh, dancing dormants. So let's keep talking about uh, the body in making oh, this. I mean, there's a lot of art that is made now, which is made on a computer screen with a mouse in which you sit at a desk and your work essentially happens on that desk. But I have a sense that the finding out and the physical activity of making it in your studio is a different thing. Maybe it's good to, to talk about wow. what, are the different, what are the different movements around your studio in the day? Are you someone who walks around, around and around? Yeah, we go up and down, you know. Uh, now we're doing a lot of work with crochet. That's what we're going to have there. So we have to organize many things with the crochet. So the process is much more... Well, the studio now. What is a studio for me? A studio for me is like lay down on a hammock, close my eyes, and then it's if I am looking to inside of it. And this uh, head here would become a void with the studio and try to begin to see the sculpture, uh, how is it, uh, the whole of it, uh, with my eyes closed. And sometimes it appears, but it, as soon it appears, it begin, you begin to have many details, how to connect one part to the other part, how to make a passageway from one side to the other side. For example, there is a connection between this uh, drops to the, to the main skin, how to hold the weight, and all of it, these things, to put the thing uh, in place to, to be, uh, uh, to be, uh, there is passageways. So many times you are also walking, and, uh, and you have problems. Now you, you need to make, so, to find out solutions. And for example, one of the, uh, when, you talk, when you talk today, when you said about the less good idea, uh, uh, but also today, when you talk about the idea, it, it passed some things on me that I remember one day that I was getting down on the studio, on the staircase, almost getting out, and suddenly I had a solution for, for a problem of the work that I was doing. And then I was saying, wow, my God. Uh, and I keep thinking, how this idea, if a solution is an idea, 
Uh, how does it come to us? And, and then the feeling I had is that because it looks like it comes from God, you know, comes from nowhere, you know, you're not really thinking that moment. It just arrives like that. And it's so, so good that you say, my God, thanks God, whatever, uh, how it come. And my feeling was that there is like if uh, an idea arrives and we, pack, we, we catch it. That's the feeling I had, you know. It's passing here and then we catch it. And you know the feeling I had after that? That maybe many other ones are passing I'm not catching. <laughs> yes. But that's, I mean, it's interesting what you're saying there about, you said you were walking up the stairs, I think, to leave the studio and you had the idea. For me, it's an interesting thing very often when I've been working on a drawing or something, and you've been working it, and you think, OK, now it's lunchtime, now I'm leaving the studio. And as you're leaving the studio, you look around, and it becomes clear what's wrong. And you return to rework it and say, OK, now I can go for lunch. And then you no, there's still something. Now it's even clearer. So even the things that were unclear all morning, suddenly at the panic of you about to leave the space, become clear and open, and then you never get to lunch. It's just at yeah. the point of leaving. It's interesting, this thing of the panic, because uh, when we, we are doing uh, these works that I do, besides this thing of the, have the idea, and, uh, the main idea, or, and, how, and, and the little ideas to make it happen, there is also the team on the studio, because I work with some people making it happen, you know? Uh, but uh, so there is one thing that is the deadline. You have an, an opening, and you, you need to trust. Uh, in my case, because um, uh, 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 you need to trust that the solution will come, that the answer will come. So many times you are seeing the sculpture, but it's not very clear. It's like if you are in a cloudy uh, area, you know, you see that, but uh, it's not very clear. Some things are really uh, appearing and disappearing and this thing. So this is one thing. The other thing that I think about that, because I had this feeling today installing the work uh, at the Goodman Gallery, uh, you, you are there and you are full of it. You are full of it. When you get out, you begin to let it go. And while, while you let it go, your body feels more empty and then you receive something. There is a space to receive and then you go back. I don't know if, uh, but it might, might be something like that. To, uh, to breathe something else, you know, because sometimes we are too much in, the, in, the, in it. And you go out and think about something else, you know, you saw a flower, I don't know. I think the, the other thing that you mentioned, which strikes me as very familiar, is that at some point in the process, an idea will arrive. And the important thing for me is to have the openness to welcome it when it comes. That, and that's what, this, that's what the less good idea of the center is about, that you have, you have your grand ideas, but then other things start happening as you're leaving the studio. Something catches your eye at the side, <laughs> and you're like, that's what I need. Yeah. And those things which seem to be at the periphery. So for me also another difference is that when you say for you a, a hammock can be a studio, for me I need the physical space of the walking and the activity of walking and of seeing things on different corners of the studio for the ideas to start to, to connect. And that if I lie in the hammock, I go into a deep neutral. I either fall asleep or my mind goes into neutral. And then I have this conversation with myself saying, any new idea? And then the other self says, no, nothing. And the other says, OK, we'll just wait. So one needs these arrivals, and it's about what strategies make these arrivals happen. So I got to tell you something. That, uh, I, let's say that this semester, uh, I begin to lay less on the, on the hummock. Right. And I begin to sleep when I lay on the hammock. Right. And I was saying, why are you not laying on the hammock? I don't know yet why. But I'm going to begin to try this one, to walk, walk, That's very walk. Good. But I have to say to you that I'm walking much more nowadays, and especially this year, not in the studio, right. but on the road, on the beach, right. or whatever. Yeah. Uh, even across in the city, I'm uh, beginning to enjoy that. Like, you know, one hour walking. Yeah. I, I go to this place, there I go walking. I don't go by bus, I don't take a car or biking, but uh, walking very much. Maybe it has related to the thing of the home. I'm going to begin to try to walk, walk cool. on the studio and see what does it happen, for you know? Me, for me, I think it's, if you think of peripheral vision, where you see things from the corner of your eyes, mm. things that are around in the studio, the edge of a work, old work, 
and think the equivalent of peripheral vision is a kind of peripheral thinking, ideas that are just floating around that one's hoping to catch at some point. There's another, I mean, for me, why the moving in the studio is. Maybe they are there all the time, but uh, this is a good thing to go. My studio has three floors, so I gotta go up and down, you know. This has been happening many times. I'm blessed with a studio with one floor. <laughs> That's so a good it's, idea, it's a circle, too. Yeah. <laughs> Let's. We'll keep coming back to the studio, but maybe as a side journey. We're going to talk about different points of connection between Johannesburg and Rio de, Rio de Janeiro. Um, so let's start with World Cup soccer. soccer. We, we had the World Cup here in 2010, you had the World Cup in 2014. Oh, yeah. uh, Brazil is number one or two on the FIFA rankings of soccer teams, South Africa is number 98 or 97. <laughs> but we also had the experience of the World uh, Cup here. And there was something very interesting that you were saying, talking earlier about soccer, the movement of the body, and its connection in a strange way to politics. Yeah, this is something that, uh, in fact, uh, So this is the new stadium. Oh, my is God. Is that right? That's the, yeah. OK. Oh, so that's the new stadium. And can we see the old stadium? You have it? I think we have an old. That's still new. Maracanã, yes, last picture. Oh, yeah. That's good. That helps. That's very good. Just to yeah. explain the two. This, the is, this is that, you know. This is a monument. This is one, one of the most important monuments of the football. And they put down for the FIFA World Cup in 2014. And this was made for the, I don't know if it was FIFA in that time, there was no FIFA, to the World Cup in, ni in 1950. Uh, so this place that you see the people stand up, it's called General. General. It's a cheaper place and people could be stand up. And during the, the last 20 years, when there was a, a FIFA game, like a classifying game for a World Cup, this general was empty. The, the, just to remind, just because that's the rule that FIFA had that at those games and World Cup games, no one is allowed to be standing, everyone has to be seated. Yeah, basically you cannot sell a ticket for a stand people. And yeah, then they destroy that to make a new stadium. This, uh, 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 this one that uh, I don't like to talk very much about. Even if the top of it is not made by concrete, you know, so the, the noise of it is not the same anymore. They keep the structures, you know. But uh, then we can go back to the other one because it's much better to see the other one. And even there's another picture in black and white, that one. Let's see that one. Uh, that's sure a cool that. picture. Okay. Uh, so this, the general place when the people see the game stand up, it was like also a place that a lot of things happening. Because someone was, you know, uh, making fun there, dancing there, or uh, maybe fighting there, or screaming, running, you know, and everybody on, the, on this concrete one and the chairs. So this was the, the concrete sitting was the, where there is an arrow, and just below that, here, here, there was the chairs, okay? So in, this, in these areas, especially on the, on the concrete one, people were watching this theater going on. But this is the not more, more important thing, you know? For me, what, what, what's happened for me, this is a crime, a cultural crime. Because uh, in Europe, they, they dance rock and roll, you know? We don't need no education. <laughs> I can't get no satisfaction, Woo. fantastic. They make concerts at the Madison Square Garden, the, the rock and roll bands are breaking everything and everybody's sitting down there watching it. This, is, this is, doesn't make any sense in Brazil. Everybody would be stand up or stand up on the chair or even I have watched a, 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 a concert from the police that we were sitting down dividing the arm of the chair. 
you know, with the other one, to be even higher. But always stand up and in balance, né? Because you are there. And dance, walk, that's all balance. When you walk, you are in balance. One feet, the other feet, one feet. Dance is balance. Uh, in Brazil, so the, the, the fact is that in Brazil, we dance other kind of music. Oh, we dance rock and roll too, you know, but we dance samba. And then you cannot do, dance that sitting down. <laughs> you just can't do like that here, you know? So when FIFA, uh, the arrogance, or FIFA goes there and forbid you to be watching the game stand up, it's much bigger what, what they are talking about. They are uh, com com uh, compressing our body, putting uh, fixing us in a situation. You know, if you are here, you are sitting here, you cannot move. You, cannot, you can move because nobody cares about the numbers. Okay, not in a FIFA game, of course they care about the numbers on the World Cup. But in a normal game, no, they're just gonna sit anywhere. But if you are stand up, you can move here, you can move there, say, okay, see you later. You can bump to some other people, you know, met someone, uh, you know, do things. It's a different culture, it's a different relationship. And this is a little bit uh, what, I, what I like to say, because this is something that is not good for our society as a planet in my opinion. Uh, I think the responsibility of FIFA as a World Cup is to respect the culture. Because uh, uh, people, when we play football, we play with our culture, with our soul, with our spirit. And, and you know, Brazil is, is such a bad time that we are having there, that we lost our spirit, you know. In the 50s, when Brazil lost this, this championship, um, there is a guy, Nelson Rodriguez, a theater guy, making short stories, incredible, also about football too. This guy is genius. And he, he, uh, he said that we, we lose the World Cup because of our complex of a street dog. Because our society is miscegenated, mixed, let's say. Uh, because the white people, uh, uh, the, the Portuguese guy arrived there and they made love with the indigenous woman. So the first mother of Brazil is indigenous for many years. The second mother of Brazil is African for many years. The, the European women, they come later. There was some in the beginning, but they really come later, 250 years later, to uh, whiteness the, the people in Brazil. So there is this thing, uh, uh, and there is a lot of brutality in it, violence, by the way, but the fact is that uh, the society is mixed in Brazil. And, and, and the football, uh, so that's why he said about this complex of a street dog, you know, because uh, we are this situation that we don't know exactly who we are because we just study the European uh, background, you know, we don't study uh, the Africans, we don't study the indigenous, and this is something that we even call ourselves Western. Uh, we, Brazil, you go to the school and, and the teacher say, we the Westerns, blah, 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 blah. And then I went to France, then I was there and I received uh, 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 some questions from a Finnish woman uh, making a study about my work. And she asked, how do you feel uh, showing the West? I said, well, at, ho at home, yeah? <laughs> at home. But I never, I never really felt at home in the US or in, 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 in Europe. And I've always thought that the question was a, a relation between the figure and the background. The figure and the background in the West is very clear. Here is the figure, here is the background, you know? In Brazil, there is a forest there. Everything can happen. Uh, like you, you are in the red light, you, the bus is stopped there, you knock the door, the guy opens the door, you go up on the, on the bus. Because the bus is on the red light, why not to do it? But in the West, it, it doesn't make sense at all, you know, because there is this, the bus stop. Why are you going to take a bus on the red light? Because there is a bus stop. I'm not criticizing anything, I'm just talking how it is. And, and this situation of the, the... Then I began to ask everybody in France. I was living at the Calder studio yeah. because I had been invited to... One day, somebody called me and said, Ernesto, would you like to have a residence at Calder studio? It was in 2007, I think. 
or uh, just or seven, said, yeah, sure. I don't know even what it was, but I said, uh, uh, take me there. <laughs> because he was really somebody very, very hug for me, you know, but very, I, I, I received many hugs from Calder, that is, if I can say something like that. And this was another hug. And then I began to ask everybody, and they said, no, Brazil, West? No, Brazil is not West. No, Brazil is not No, you know, you're not West. And you know, I began to talk to two friends of mine who had lived there with me, I mean, two months, blah, blah, blah. One uh, intellectual, Jewish, from a uh, poet from Paris, called him, hey, Frank, is Brazil West? No, no, Brazil, you, have, you guys have this thing of the body. You know, you have this thing of the body. I said, no, oh, okay, okay, okay. Then there's another thing, I'm not gonna go deeper on it because I can tell you later, but uh, then there was a, a call, another girl, a friend of mine, Elodie. Hey, Elodie, she worked at that time at the Von Lambert Gallery. Elodie, uh, is Brazil the West? No, no, you guys, you, you have this thing of the body. We are like the robots. You know? So I think the body is back here, you know, with yeah. the situation. But it's, I mean, it's a, it was what you were also talking about when we met earlier, was um, you, you didn't directly say that Brazil lost 7-1 to Germany in the semi-finals of that last World Cup because you were forced to sit in the seats. But there was a sense of things being lost between that, between the money spent on the Olympics, the fire, and I'm interested in that and your sense of the new right-wing government that you have in so, Brazil. Yeah, so we had this thing of the, 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 the Brazil had not been champion because of the complex of the white uh, the street, dog. street dog. And then in 58, eight years later, Brazil became championship and it was incredible for the whole world because we are playing something called football art or art football, I don't know, art soccer. I don't know how do you translate that. And, and then in 62, and then in 70, with incredible team too. Uh, and then on 82, we played this football art strongly again, and we lost that. And since then, there was some things like that. We win 94, and it was like, it's, it's, you know, of course I get happy about that, you know. Uh, but uh, it was terrible, you know, to see we winning the game in a penalty. Yeah, final, you know, this is with Italy. And then we have a great time in, in, in 2002 because it was very free. But the problem is that Brazil began to play just about winning, you know, and began to play very, a lot of strategic, like European strategic, because we need to win, you know, it's like we need to win, like you, you, need, to, you need to get the gold, you need to get the gold, you know, and that is the point. And, this, and at, at this World Cup, we had a World Cup that even we were with a kind of left-wing government, but this left-wing was kind of very good in other things, but a lot of concessions in other things, corruption mixed with that. All the, all the reality of this colonization of Brazil began to appear, you know, and we didn't want that anymore. And because of the ticket, all these uh, uh, movements, begin because the ticket, free ticket, a uh, group of people from Sao Paulo, they want free tickets for buses, you know, free riding, to people be able to move around the cities. And then it began to be a much bigger thing because in reality, there was a kind of a, 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 a movement of joy in, in a way for me, you know, but a movement of, the, of dancing, singing, desiring uh, justice, balance, uh, happiness, desire, I put everything upside down to, to make things uh, happen in a proper way. You know, it's simple to have things make in a proper way. Everybody knows, you know, everybody, uh, we all, you know, if something happened with my kid, your kid, or anybody's kid, doesn't matter if you are rich, poor, black, white, fat, thin, uh, tall, small, you're gonna feel the same. You know, we're gonna have the same feelings, you know. We all need to go to the toilet, you know, doesn't matter the culture you have, we all need to eat. <sighs> and we share this air between all of us. Bon, we went there and this had been smashed by the, by the police. This smashed by, with bats, uh, lacrimogenium gas, and, and, and pepper spray. And we felt the same uh, feeling that the same people from the communities most of them black people, in fact, post-slavery felt because the police get inside in Brazil on the, on the favelas and they put the, knock the door, get inside, smash the people. They don't come with documents like in the house of the people of the medium class. 
In the south zone of Rio de Janeiro, for example, you know that you need to have a document to get in, in the house of people. People are being killed in Brazil saying that they are a drug dealer by the police, you know, because they have an umbrella here. Ah, it looks like a rifle, they're shot. Uh, I have a friend, who, the daughter of my director of my studio, she works uh, with mothers who had lost their kids. And when the police kill them, uh, the police say that they were drug dealers. But they were not. And so the mother goes there, lost the kids, uh, or the friend goes to the jail, and they go there to try to prove that they were not drug dealers. So very sad things. But it shows us, in that moment of the, the, the bats on the walks, that the dictatorship in Brazil had, had no finish. It had no, not finished in that moment, you know. Because for, it finished for us. They give a concession for the medium class, but for the, the poor people, they could not really scream, you know. And when we decide to scream, we had been smashed. No, so then, uh, and one of the scream is that, uh, não vai ter copa, não vai ter copa. There will no be, the will, World Cup will won't happen. World Cup will won't happen. Because everybody was very upset with all, everything of the World Cup that was going on. Very much, we, we all talk about the money issues. The money issues, people have been taken out of their... But anyway, the money issues. But I like to talk about spiritual issues too. Because I think they are connected. And when they put down Maracanã to make this thing, they cut, we cut our own culture. We, who, who had been the, 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 the gift on this planet of playing football, you know, you go to, you go in uh, some countries, you see people who are walking with a Brazilian football game t uh, uh, shirt, you know, because everybody loves the Brazilian football, because it was a generous football, you know, it was a football full of love, of jo or joy, playful, you know, and then uh, uh, that celebrated this mix of people because we have, we have something very special in Brazil. We have the European people, we have the African people, we have the indigenous people together, you know. And, and this is not, uh, uh, had been not to respect, we begin not to respect ourselves. We all, each one of us as a person, we need to respect, we need to love each one of us. Then we are possible to love the others, no? But, uh, uh, but this situation began to be very unbalanced. And then we lost this 7-1 game. This is score is not a natural score for a, for a game of high-level uh, football teams, football selections. And it happens inside of Brazil, in the same final, with Germany, who play like jazz, like Brazilians, in a way, you know, where Brazilians were all afraid, you know, uh, because they, they values. The values, the values of, our, of our life should be bigger than just win, win, win. Uh, do anything to get the gold, you know. That, that is life. We are alive. Look at the, look at the birds singing. Look at, look at the rivers floating, the sun shining. You know, we are together in this planet, breathing this wonderful air yeah, yeah, with many people. But uh, this was a lesson for me in that moment. It had happened also that into, this was 2014, 2013, I went to the Amazon forest and I met the Hunikuin people, indigenous people who make this kind of bracelets. This one are from the Yawanawa people. They both Pano people and they do some ceremonies, spiritual ceremonies, where they drink the sacred medicine and some other medicines. That is the ayahuasca, rapé, cambo, sananga. That's they connect them to the, to the forest, connect them to the birds, connect them. They learn with the birds, they learn with the ants, they learn with the animals, they learn with the plants. They, these medicines, with these medicines, they generate their knowledge. They begin to, that's going to the university when they go to a diet and they stay having a special medicines, a special diet, uh, they are doing their PhD. Then they learn how to talk with the plants. And the plants say that this plant is good for that, and this plant is good for that. And then the, the West go there, pick up the plant, pick up the knowledge, go to the lab, make the pills, and make a lot of money with that. So I went to meet these people who has a complete integrated relation to nature. Relation that we, the Westerns, because part of our Brazilian is also Westerns, and this society where the art becomes separate from everything, and we are always trying 
to, to congregate, and I see very much in William's work uh, this trying to, to embrace this whole uh, society, whole being, this air of these shadows. Uh, they have this all connected. Uh, there's no separation. And these people can teach us very much about many things. So uh, the, the Germans, look how these things. The Germans, they win Brazil 7-1, and they win Argentina in the end in, at Maracanã. And they pick up the, 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 the cup, né, the gold cup, put in the center. At some point, they put it on the grass, like this chair. And they begin to dance. Hey, hey, you mama, hey, you baba, by away. Hey, hey, yeah, ma, a coia, baba, gay, hey, ha. Dancing together, we call it tore. It's indigenous dance that you give your hands or not, that you go in, you go out, and you spin around. It had happened not just in Brazil, everywhere in the world, in the ancestral societies. People dance like that together, to bring the force together, to go together doing something, to heal together the situation. So uh, when this game came, uh, I had, I had a, a rapé, which is, is, a, is a tabac. I had smoke a pot. I had beers, you know. There was a big storm, you know, a gigantic rain going on. When I, when I began to walk on the game, we saw in, a, in a, the bar of a friend of us, I begin to saw this dark, dark cloud. I said, my God, this is not very good, no. <laughs> and then this is storming. And then I get out. There, is, there, is, there was a Marquise here. Everybody was in. I get out on the rain, you know. And I begin to feel the train and scream. Game of the healing. Uh, rain of the healing. Heal Brazil. Because Brazil needs to heal. The problem of Brazil is a problem of heal. It's sick. Is a sickness. And then we had to confirm this situation. Like one or two years later, we have the dam of Mariana who break down and all the poison went killing a river, killing everything, and also uh, destroying the land of the Krenak people, indigenous people who one of their leaders are a friend of mine, a great guy, you know, who had put all the 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 rights of the indigenous on the constitution in 88. And that's, that's the dumb, yeah. This dead, the river, you know? It's like he full of uh, uh, chemical stuff that they use to, I don't know, to this mining problem. That is a big problem for the planet, for the indigenous people, for, you know, now for everybody around this river. And, and, and you know what begins to happen? A lot of yellow fever. Yellow fever begin to happen, hard, hard, it's yellow fever. Yeah, it was yellow fever that began to happen. You know why? You know why? Because the frogs stopped biting the, 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 the yes, mosquitoes. You know, it's like that. When, when just after that, somebody said, uh, we hear some radio, I don't know, I read somewhere, there's going to be a lot of yellow fever soon. One year later, people oh, have a yellow fever problem, dengue, and a lot of, a lot of things of mosquitoes. Because it's one thing. This is, it, it, ecology is not a joke, you know. What these things that the indigenous are telling us uh, since long time, it's just we, science is beginning to realize that, not that now, that the frog eat, that is the problem of the bees, now I heard that uh, some people know. So, and then we have the fire. So this is the, 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 the sport of, a sport catastrophe, the, not, lose is not a catastrophe, but 7-1 is a message. For me, this was a message of the gods to say, Brazilians, pay attention what's going on. And then we have the fire on the museum. These people, they hate culture. You know, this, is, was, this museum was something yeah, so incredible. <laughs> it's, it burned, that's simple like that, burn everything. <laughs> That's my country, you know, uh, it's really, uh, really nice to be here, but <laughs> everything's burning there. And now we have this president that he, <laughs> he wants to, f uh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but he's totally against uh, the indigenous, they want their land, because the people, the people who, uh, who does the soya business, the, uh, you know, uh, commodities business, Soya, uh, uh, canna, sugar cane to make oil, to make ethanol, 
uh, soya to make, make food for the cows, uh, mostly in China, and whatever, meat and corn, and these monoculture things destroys everything. But at the same time, uh, there is a guy named Ernest Gutt, who is a Swiss guy, who developed in Brazil something named Syntropic Agriculture. And they realized, what the indigenous know since a long time, but anyway, that put, uh, planting together, the plants one help the other. And with the science, he increased that very much. So plants who take the water out, plants who make this. He said, he, he said his sentence is, there's no bad land. Uh, water, we plant. So these things are going on, which cause our agroforests. Today, you know, there was, there was two weeks ago, uh, two weekends ago, there was the plant, uh, plant Rio, uh, very much related to this agroforest thing event. Then there was an event named uh, Selvagem. There was something else. Ah, there was a Collabor America, Collaborative America. Mr. I'm going to, I'm going yeah. to. No, 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 not. No, no, think, no, 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 no. For me, the, for me, the extraordinary thing is that what we're seeing is a mind that works at a million miles an hour making these different uh, connections. And in South Africa, we are so often separated yeah. from different parts of our histories yeah. that people who have a deep connection the way you do so immediately to indigenous, to ancient, ancient cultures, to, the current, to current sport. I mean, I'm just envious of the way that you can have these immediate connections. I enjoyed watching the South African World Cup soccer. I had no expectations that we would do well. None of us did. And it but was you made the first good... goal. We made the... Yes, we did. We did in two. We scored the first goal against Mexico. You told me. And that was like our great... That was our great sporting moment. And Vuvuzela. Wow. And the Vuvuzela. Yeah, this is great, man. So the Vuvuzela, so, but the Vuvuzela I mean, that's sad. If that is your closest connection to a deep uh, cultural past, that's... It's, it's limited compared to the, what you've been describing. And for me, it's extraordinary to think of all of that is what is swirling around in your studio, whether you're in the hammock or walking around, <laughs> all of those different things. And then the impulse is there to find in the work that is made, how do you find something that when you're walking through it, you're in the worlds that you are describing. And for me, the what you were showing with the, both the in indigenous dance around the World Cup, for me that turns into a strange kind of piece of theatre. I would immediately think, oh, yeah, yeah. that <laughs> a, a piece of theatre? The difference between dancing and what you're doing with your hips, which I'm not going to embarrass myself with, um, is also astonishing. Because for me it is, in the studio there is a space in which the movement of the body becomes so much part of the making of the work of the art, whether it ends up as a drawing or as a conversation or as a, a piece of thinking aloud, as you've done for us. So it's an extraordinary performance that we've just been witness to, I think. Um, I think that feels to me like a good place. I mean, we have a, a very good sense of the points of connection between South Africa and Brazil, points of of difference, of difference that are there. Um, I think let's talk, as a, just as a final topic for a few minutes before we have to end, let's talk about gravity. And what you say about pouring objects and finding the gravity. And then I'll talk a bit about anti-gravity. Yeah, Dad, you should talk about that because you do it. When well, you dance, there are people dancing, shadows dancing, floating. Gravity. Gravity for me is almost a kind of God, you know. If there is a God, so I have to choose, gravity would be there, there. Yeah. You see, you have this water here now. Water is here. Now it's going to fall down. Gravity. Nah, keep us here, in the ground. Nah, looks like a prison, but it is a, is a, is a how can I say, a, a gift to be able to be sit, to be stand, to be feeling our body. Uh, I've been working with gravity since always in my work, you know. Sometimes more, sometimes less, tension, tension always. But uh, 
Once I get inside of uh, our work from Helio Tsika, that uh, Helio Tsika is this uh, guy that he is already dead. He died young, 40 something. He did great work, you know, but something. Uh, and it was just a tube. There's, 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 there's some parangolés mm -hmm. that uh, William reminded me today in the morning. Uh, and this one was just a tube, and it was a tube of plastic. And I got inside in a blue tube of plastic in a in a in a in a opening of them. And I was there, lay down on the on the ground, and I couldn't really smell. I couldn't really hear. I couldn't see anything. I couldn't touch. The only really feeling that I have, feeling that I was alive, was the gravity, the weight of my own body on the thing. So gravity and weight are two things that I've been uh, dancing with since a long time. And that's what Calder was doing. This is a sculpture problem, you know? You have to put something stand up. What do you mean? You don't, you don't have to, but normally it's that. Now, how to be, and this is a dance too, you know? a dancer. He deals with gravity all the time. Uh, I don't know. What do we do say? Um. I think I had a sense of the problems of gravity when I was doing yoga. And the yoga teacher said, just lean forward and lean forward and just bend forward from the waist, keep your back straight, and just let gravity do the work. And I realized that gravity wasn't going to help me any further. <laughs> I was stuck. And that I thought, come on, come on, pull, pull. There's the whole earth underneath there. All those millions of kilos, it's just one little head. Pull it down, pull it down. <laughs> and then pull a bit, a bit, a bit. And then she said, put your hands on your, on your toes. And then go, and then she said, put them on your ankles. Put your hands on your knees. Or just put them on your thighs. <laughs> and I thought, OK, this is where I... So when I often do things which are films that are running and things falling, and then I can say, well, I can just go from forward to backwards, and then they all come back up into the air. There's a kind of a an ambiguity of wanting to be held by the laws of the world, but also wanting to say, what would it be like to have a... Which, to, to, run, to, to run things backwards, to feel things differently, to take that weight away. What is the fantasy, no? The fantasy, the fantasy flows... is of perfection and, re and regret, and regret. Can one undo the things you wish you hadn't said? And you know we can't, but it's sometimes thinking, what would that be? That's a um, less good idea. That's a less good idea. <laughs> All of you, sir. <laughs> good. I think that's a... Is that a good place to stop? A uh, less good place. A less good place. <laughs> less good place. But thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> that was great. That was